The launch of a new generation of consoles Wait, only comes every seven years or so, and this one happened to occur during a pandemic, causing online distribution to blow everything to shit. Especially the retail website servers. PS5 and Xbox Series X go head on in a virtual and physical battle. Which one will come out on top? It was the PS5. By far. Analyzing this will be like that Titanic documentary, where there's 10 things that kind of went wrong, and either one of them could have led to the ship sinking. Was it the approach that caused PS5 to come out on top? The marketing? The features? The games? Or was it a little bit of everything that caused the argument of PS5 versus Xbox Series X to be a no-brainer? When the two console designs were first released, they were being shit on hard by people online. But they could have chosen any design and people would have done that. A lot of people were thrown off by the PS5's badass design. For the script of this video, I wanted to say that the PS5 had a goofy or wacky design, but it doesn't. That shit looks incredible. The controller too. Some say it's trying too hard to be futuristic, and to that, I say shut the fuck up! They're the same type of people who go crazy over the Xbox One's look. That shit was just a box. Is that what you want the PS5 to be? A box? The Series X looks cool, I guess, but as Mark Ass Brownlee said, It's the matte black box, the main console. If I'm being honest, it does look pretty plain. Hey, I wouldn't blame you for wanting nobody to know that you have an Xbox either, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> See, he gets it. But the look really sums up the entire approach both companies took on their launches. PlayStation had a giant ass, humongo trailer for each city it dropped. Wow! 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 And then you've got Xbox. Uh, hey guys, if you could uh, pay attention for a moment, if, it, if it's not too much trouble, we're launching the Series X today, so if you could, uh, Go out and buy that, uh, if you want. I mean, I, I don't want to push you or anything. PS5 had a million ads collaborating with different companies. They've got PS5 shoes. They sent this to thousands of celebrities. But that's where I start to get a little pissed at Sony. I look at a streamer's Instagram story, and they're talking about how PlayStation sent them 10 PlayStations, and they're doing a giveaway. Or I see some YouTuber with 400 subscribers doing an unboxing video on the PS5 that Sony sent them. And then you check every website and it's sold out and they're going for $2,000 on eBay. Or they send out two to GameStop for Black Friday. What the fuck? Why do you give out half your inventory to a bunch of nobodies and then sell three to the public? And now I have to save up money to buy it off a scalper. I don't know when they'll be commonly available at retail stores for $500. And this is the problem with the PS5 launch. And the Xbox launch, I think. But to be honest, I didn't give a shit about buying that, so I never really checked. The only thing I know is that Microsoft Store, through Walmart, is selling the Xbox at $1,000. Not a scalper, not a third party, Microsoft is. They marketed the console for $500, and then sold it for $1,000, and people weren't happy. It shouldn't have been $500 in the first place. Putting the PS5 and the Xbox Series X price at the same level should be a crime, because these are not the same. The look of the console can only be so much of a selling point, but ultimately, you buy a console for what it can do. Obviously. What can the Xbox do? It can run a little faster than the PS5. That's it. That and being able to play all your past Xbox games on it. All seven of them. One for each Madden from 2013 to 2020. Another little feature Xbox fans have been arguing as a selling point is how you can swap between games without having to restart them. Which is cool, but it's not a selling point. You don't buy the ice cream for the cherry on top, you buy the ice cream because it tastes good. And this ice cream tastes like mashed potatoes. Bland. What Xbox is really banking on is that people will buy it for its power. Which isn't that more than the PS5. But at that point, just buy a damn PC if you're so in love with power. Xbox had pretty much nothing to make this console stand out, which includes the controller. Holy shit! Our Xbox One controller is already an amazing controller. And so how do you go about making that even better? This controller is the exact same as the other one. Not a single difference, except for the share button. Looks the same, structured the same, feels the same. Then you look at the change from the PS4 to the PS5 controller. 
God damn. Everybody, including Xbox obviously, thought you couldn't have made a controller any better. But obviously not, because PlayStation just did. And they did it with haptic feedback. I'll give you a brief explanation of what haptic feedback is. The trigger moves when you shoot a gun, and you can feel the footsteps in the controller. The entirety of the PS5's identity is completely independent from the PS4's. The UI looks sick, they made it so that it runs faster, you can see your friend's screen in party chat, you can bring up achievement tutorials easily, better graphics, haptic feedback, a lot of new features that make it so that people want it because it's a lot different. People were less excited about the Series X because it was more of a mid-generation console. It ran faster and it looked a bit different. There's nothing that makes you think, I need that immediately! But the real deal breaker is the games. PS5 had the largest amount of launch titles a PlayStation has ever had. Miles Morales, Demon's Souls, Sackboy, Bug Snacks, Astro's Playroom, Godfall. And those are just the launch titles. The Xbox was supposed to have Halo, until it didn't. The only chance of ever being close to the PS5 was Halo being a launch title, and they fucked it up. Just look at the sales! Xbox fucked it up. And the real reason is, is that Sony was so creative and ambitious, and Xbox was too grounded and boring. PlayStation just walked up to Xbox, told it to get, get the, the fuck, fuck out of here, slapped its face so hard it flew out the window, and kept walking. All PlayStation needs to do to give the final blow to Xbox is make it so that the PS5 Pro, or whatever they're calling it, can support any PlayStation game, can run at the same speed as the Xbox, and maybe do the swap between games thing. If PlayStation does that, it's going to be a brutal fatality.